At what point were you like, this is a real company? Like at what point oh, did, you, did you get to like, oh my goodness, this is like taking more of my time or we have a lot of accounts? A couple of years ago. I mean, and even then, maybe like one or two years ago. It was just... Uh, in your head though, what was what was that like? Were you like, oh, this is this is legit now? Or, in my head, I was like, oh, I got, I'm like, this is like a thing. I got to treat it like a startup where it's like, you know, like day and night, kind of die by it and just make it work. Do you ever feel the imposter syndrome of it all? All the time. I think we all do. I don't yeah. know. Do you? Oh, dude, I was at dinner last night, and this is all we talked about. My buddy just sold his company, huge acquisition. Kudos. He to still him. feels like an imposter. He feels like he tricked everybody into. He also did it all the time on the daily, and so we were both talking about it. We were talking about the reality of what that's like, and is he, is he brown? No, I was talking no, to a friend but, of mine. We had dinner. I had dinner at my house, and I had uh, my friend. She owns a, a restaurant, and another friend. She owns a restaurant, and another guy. He owns a restaurant. And we were just talking, right? And then three of us were talking about the same thing, how we feel. And I was talking about my personal experience, how I, I feel a lot of things that stop me, my needing, the need to physically do work sometimes stops my growth. For sure. Because I, I put my effort into dumb shit that I could easily outsource. This is what I tell Nick every day. Yeah. This is going to get real right now. So I've so been telling Nick he needs yeah. a Nick Jr., yeah. So we because grow. it stops me, right? Like I'm right. like I'm doing all these things. I'm physically doing these things myself. Right. And then our other friend, she was like, "Dude, like all you guys are talking about, like she was like, you just gotta, you guys just gotta like own this shit and like, be like yeah, this is with you guys, like." And she, and she was like, "I don't know what what it is about the way you guys grew up or something." She was like, "I just fucking accept it. I'm just it, you know. This is just me." And I was like, "Fuck, I gotta, I gotta get on that level." Yeah. And she 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 was like, you know, we as managers have two jobs. Delegate and follow up. And if you're doing anything else, you're just wasting your time. It's hard, it, though. It's tough to relinquish ownership. Of it's something. tough to relinquish ownership. Yeah, it is very, especially when it's more creative. Like on your yes. end, it's more creative. Mm -hmm. But I mean, without systemizing things, you're not going to be able to grow. Right. Because at the end of the day, you have the same amount of time as everyone else. And if that time is taken up by this task, then that task is going to go unaccomplished. Yeah. Or you're just going to maintain where you are. Right. Right. Which, but that's another conversation where it's like in our community of like people who are doing stuff. Yeah. There's this like when pe the first thing people ask you are like, oh, what are you up to? And you're like, oh, I'm doing this. And they're like, oh, cool. What's new? What else? And I'm like, <laughs> fuck, now I got to have something else too. <laughs> that's always it's, the question. It's always like, what, like, what's, what, what new thing are you working on? Yeah. Right. Right. And it's like, ah, like people are like, it's like the restaurant, the micheladas, the book, and people are, oh, okay, um, what else? What else? Yeah. And I'm like, ah, fuck. It's, <laughs> it's never good enough. Yeah. Nothing's ever good enough for anyone. Well, there's an expectation there, right? And then I don't know if it's like, a, like, it's not real though, right? Like nobody really expects you to like, people are, people, do. it's just a conversational thing. It's like yesterday I was on the, I get a phone call from a friend, hadn't spoken to them a while in, in a, like two years. And they're like, looks like you're killing it. Oh my God. All this exciting stuff. Love the podcast, love the brewery. How's it all going? And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. That's your yeah, world. That's view? that exactly. Hmm. Yeah, because like, doesn't inside, feel like it. From where yeah, I'm from the inside, right it doesn't look here. like that at all. <laughs> no, the I'm day to day like, is very different. It's completely different. Yeah, and it's um. Anyway, we were talking about this last night at length, and it was kind of like how we cope with it, right? Like the seesaw of it all. How do you cope with it? So for me, what I was telling my buddy is, it, it there's two there's two things. One all the fears and the, the fear of failure lives in my subconscious and particularly when I come out, when I sleep. Mm -hmm. And so then it just comes out. And for a long time, I was super good at ignoring it and blocking it out. I was so good at that. It was like all ego. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd like plug into the ego and then it would just block it out. And it was just getting worse. And so at some point I just needed to talk to it, right? Yeah. And have the conversation and just accept it and be like, look, this is a normal thing. We're all going through it talking to other people, people like you, right, that are that feel it. And then you're like, oh, I'm not alone in this. How great, right? And so you're in a safe space with other people and just realizing it's just normal. It's part of it and um, embracing it to some extent. Basically not running away yeah. from it. Is, facing is, it. Yeah, facing well, it. That's kind of what I, I did. I just, just doing right, and not worrying about the perfection or the looks of it. Yeah. The other thing is like momentum. So I try to keep momentum going. And then it's um, tiring. It's, it's tiring, but it's also... I've gotten, I think, pretty good at just hiring the experts, you know, not overthinking, hire the experts. And that's, yeah. I think that's why I like real estate development so much is because I, I literally can't be the lawyer. I can't be <laughs> the architect. I can't be the environmental assessment company. 
And so it forces me to rely on people to do their job. And at the same time, it's like, it makes me feel good. I'm employing people, but I'm also getting good counsel or yeah. good services. And so there's a whole component to, I think, real estate development where it also solves, solves the what's next because there's another project. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and so it's like I figured out the construct of how to check the boxes. Do you have a end place? Do you have a place where you'll be comfortable stopping? So this is, so we talked about this last night too. For me, it, so everything goes back to the why you do it. The why. And, and, and it's not like, oh, because I like it. It's so fun. It's like, I love drinking. It's not, it's not that. Yeah. The why is like super personal to you. And so for me, I've just always really valued my time and being able to dictate my time. But you that's, can do that now. I mean, like, so that's a weird question, though, because it's, it's a weird because I, you know, I mean, you can do that very easily with very little. You can. And no doubt. Right. But if you want to grow your if you want to have kids, as an example, like there's a there's a fiscal responsibility you have to these individuals you want to bring into the world. And my whole thing is. How do I maximize my time with them without having a nine to five or without being in a chair all day? And that is the problem I've, I feel like I've solved. And so the question isn't to me anyway, it, when is it enough? I have it now, mm -hmm. right? It's what changes around you that then requires a system to optimize to let's say two kids, three kids, no kids. Right. And so it's always the balance. Yeah. And I think, as an entrepreneur, you're always thinking, I want this, so let me optimize the system to get me that. And sometimes it's just vanity. Sometimes people are like, oh, I want the car. Uh, yeah. I want this mansion. And so they work really hard to do that. For me, it's none of that. It's just, yeah. it's just my time. It's like, how do I maximize my time? I'm trying to strip. Yeah, when I got married, I uh, one of the things that changed inside of me, I like, I was like, I got to strip away all the wants inside of me Yeah. and just focus on like the realness, like the communication, the time. Time spent with people, time spent being present. Yeah. And like stop worrying about money in a weird way. Like, you know, but I'm still working a lot. So it's not like. Right. So I'm trying to figure out what my end thing is. Because right, right now, you know, we cut back and right now we're living on like so little money, but still doing the same amount of things and still being happy and still doing all those things. So we're just saving and saving and saving. But why? <laughs> Why are you saving? I don't know. You see, even this, <laughs> yes. I'm, sa I'm saving right now for like I want to. I want to get into like real estate investing. Yeah. So I'm I'm saving capital. Got it. Because I'm trying to systemize my life where I can then get like the residual incomes and do all those things. Right. You're trying to create passive income for yourself. Exactly. Right. So you could have your time back. Yeah. Yeah. But I could even have my time back now. It's just like. But you require more. The system requires more. The yeah. life requires more. The family requires more. Yeah, but it never stops never stops it only gets worse <laughs> yeah like your wife's not gonna one day be like oh, i want less time from you <laughs> right or your kids or yeah. your family family needs change i mean you have a lot of siblings once they have kids you know then you have a nephew nieces yeah yeah you want to spend time with them that's what happened for me i have two nephews and all i want to do is make sure like i see them as much as i can they're in massachusetts and so it goes back to the time equation systems here cool i gotta optimize so we can go back to the east coast four times a year be present right be part of their lives that's like important to me it's an ever-evolving thing it is 